The onset of winter brings hardship to Europe. Millions struggle to pay their fuel bills and heat their homes. In Newcastle, in Northern England, a quarter of the population find themselves in this situation, not least because of soaring gas and electricity prices. We see excess winter mortality in this country, which is just appalling. You know, the difference between summer deaths and winter deaths. So investment in energy efficiency is actually an investment in health. Protecting the environment is seen as a luxury by many who find it hard to pay for heat and power in their homes. So can a balance be found? Energy efficient houses run on eco-friendly sources is the approach promoted by the European Union's Sustainable Energy Europe campaign. Lisa Stroud is a 17-year-old single mum living in the rundown Walker district of Newcastle. In winter, she spends over a quarter of her weekly benefits on heating her council house. But even that isn't enough. It's been quite cold. Normally put the heating on constantly, like, a lot of money on the gas for it. It's normally freezing. Even if I've got the heating on, it's like still a bit cold. But help is at hand. Warm Zone is a non-profit making yeah, body yes, that helps so those caught in the fuel poverty trap. Lot, uh, Their services include checking house insulation. Well there's going to be a lot of benefit for you Mrs Stroud, uh, especially on, on a, you're going to save at least £150 a, a year on your annual mm -hmm. heating bills because you lose a lot of your heat out through your walls and, okay, and it makes your house more energy efficient and it, you don't have to use as much heating which is saving the environment but we're trying to keep the house within uh, the, the energy within your house, the heat within your house, so you're not losing it out through the walls and you don't have to spend as much on, on, on the heating bills. Warm Zone has insulated over 30,000 homes in the Newcastle area. Wall cavity filling is one method. The result is more comfortable houses that are healthier to live in and kinder to the environment. Another way to tackle fuel poverty is to switch to alternative energy sources that can be cheaper and less polluting. Glenn Graham is a police officer in Morpeth, a small town near Newcastle. By investing in a state-of-the-art wood furnace that provides heat and hot water, he's cut his energy bill down to 150 euros a year, what most of his neighbours spend a month. I really still have to pinch myself because if you think from birth, you, you know, heat in the Northern Hemisphere, heat equals money. Um, heat doesn't equal money for us anymore, and that is so strange. While richer countries are preoccupied by rising fuel bills and energy efficiency, almost a third of the world's population doesn't have access to light and heat at the flick of a switch. More than one and a half billion people in the developing world don't have electricity. This is an area in northern Senegal, near the border with Mauritania. In rural areas like this, only 4% of the population has access to electricity. And only one in a hundred has a telephone line. Vincent Stachetti of Electricien Sans Frontières, or Electricians Without Borders, wants to change that. The French NGO has brought solar power to 60 isolated villages in northern Senegal. Today, Stachetti is checking to see if a newly installed solar system is not just being used to recharge mobile phones. As almost no homes in this village have electricity, children study at night time in school, which now has a power supply. The director says it's had a dramatic impact on results. Children don't now have the excuse that they couldn't do their homework because there's no electricity at home. Now they can learn their lessons and improve their education. We can see that in the results. Energy is essential in health centres to light and cool rooms and keep vaccines and medicines chilled. This fridge used to be gas-powered. 
the electricity supply was rationed and intermittent. Now, solar panels bring cheaper and more reliable energy, just as well as gas stocks are running out. The health centre's director says the arrival of solar power has completely changed the way he works. If I were to turn the light off now, we couldn't work. So the light has brought many things to our work. Even the way babies are delivered has changed since six solar panels were installed on the roof. At night time, obviously, we didn't have light. Deliveries were done by torchlight. The midwife had to take the torch, put it at head height. And fix it in place. You see how difficult that was? So electricity has brought us many things, particularly in how we work. Dr. Batyi is one of the lucky few in this village to have electricity at his home. But even he doesn't have enough power to run his computer. And his kitchen isn't exactly cluttered with appliances. Stacetti visits Senegal frequently to make sure the solar equipment is being properly maintained. But the success of the Electricien Sans Frontier project ultimately rests with the Senegalese themselves. That's why it's working closely with the training centre in the village of Richardtol to ensure young people are being taught how to install and maintain solar panels. The way forward is through renewable sources like solar energy, which work well and don't pollute local environments. Alexandre D'Angelo is the founder of Solaire Solidarité, a Belgian NGO that's helped fund the Senegalese project through the sale of these solar-powered sunflowers. The potential of solar energy is absolutely colossal. In fact, it could give all humanity a thousand times the energy supply it needs. It shows us there's plenty for everyone. Everyone should have access to energy, but unfortunately, there are many in the developing and developed world who don't. But the situation is slowly changing to the benefit of people and the planet.